And welcome friends to Kiki's Keys to Unlocking Your Best Life, a show where we share stories of people who've gone through their worst and are now living their best. My name is Kiki Rogers. I'm your gracious hostess. So I do want to say, please be advised that some of the content that we do talk about on the show can be traumatic in nature and could be disturbing to some listeners. So listener discretion is advised. But that being said, we do share stories of people who have been through their worst but are now living their best because we want to give hope and inspiration to others. And so we're so happy to do so. Thank you very much to our sponsors that are helping us be on the air. And thank you to my guest today who's here. Her name is Kim Green. She's the CEO of Words LLC and Blank Page Consulting. As a writing coach, she works with authors of all different levels to help them get to the end of their story that they want to write. So uh, welcome, Kim Green, to Kiki's Case. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. And um, I am love that intro music that you have <laughs> thank you i like that upbeat little jam i'm working on getting it on the podcast so that's why we've been holding back on posting a couple of our podcasts just because we're kind of working with the technology to get it right for y'all and then we're just going to dump about six episodes on all of you one night but um uh yeah i really love that bumper music that is um cardi b's song best life and mm -hmm. Um, I said Jay-Z before, and it's not Jay-Z. I keep forgetting who it is that um, does the intro. Then I should that. know, and I don't, because I was in the music industry for 20 years. So, <laughs> And I'm like, oh, I didn't even bring my phone in with me today, because <laughs> it, it went off on us last week, and I was like, not going to do that again. And I won't look it up, but I should know it off the top of my head. I look at it all the time, but um, I know all you are yelling at the radio, so thank you very much for your <laughs> suggestions. I wish I could hear you. Um, but let's go on and talk a little bit more about our guest, Kim. Welcome. Tell us a little bit more about how you work as a writing coach with Blank Page Consulting. Well, I just, I've been a writer for my entire career, so I started out as a copywriter, and then I went on to be a music journalist. So I was interviewing all the artists and doing all that. And then I worked at the record label as a record executive. Um, and so then I got the opportunity to write, believe it or not, my first ghostwriting project, which was Fantasia Barina, which she had just won American Idol. Okay. So that was a, just a whirlwind thing that happened. And then the book was a number one bestseller and all of that. Um, and then they made it into a movie on Lifetime Television. So it was just a, like a really whirlwind experience. And then I did another ghostwriting project that I didn't love so much, another celebrity. Um, and then I just decided I don't love this because the celebrities are too busy to really be involved. And okay. I believe so strongly in the power of writing. That's my thing. So I want people to understand how powerful it is to write and how it can change your life. And I think people who say, I want to write a book, but they're not really plugged into what it means to do that. And so I don't want people, I don't like the ghost writing thing. Like I'm going to give you my story and you just write it. Mm -hmm. I want people to be involved. And so I decided I wanted to work with writers who want to go through the transformational process of writing. And so I support writers in every way possible, technically, creatively, emotionally, spiritually. You know, we really work together in a deep relationship and we get the book done. Well, that's incredible. What is the average time frame that usually takes? You know, it's funny. I have a 11 week program and then I when people go through that program, they get invited to do a six month program for a greatly reduced price. Usually, and everything is going right and the stars align, people get their books finished. After that, that's about 35 weeks. They can get the book done, at least the first draft and some revisions. And then we go, you know, the process is longer when we go to self-publishing and getting the cover and getting, the t you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. But we can get a really good, if a book is targeted and the writer really knows what they're doing and what, we, what they want to do, rather, we can get it done in 35 or 40 weeks if they're committed, if they come to every meeting, hand in a chapter every week, you know, just sort of follow my lead, trust me, 
mm-hmm. and then we can get it done. And then, you know, life happens. I'm very aware of that. And some but people take longer. Sometimes we need somebody else to come alongside us. We can't do everything on our own. That's right. And just, you know, surrendering to the mm-hmm. fact that we're not all perfect. And sometimes you, we need to lean in on other people's talents. It's right amazing that you have this talent to give did you always know that was a passion of yours i've been writing my whole life and it all started when i was 15 years old and my mother died on the new york city subway and yes we, let's talk <laughs> that's where you and <laughs> i really can that's where the traumas begin that is um and so here i was 15 years old what to do i was just i was an only <sighs> child and so my father who was very close to me and very in my life, even though my parents were divorced. So he just moved right in and then began the adventure of like the grieving process, trying Mm -hmm. to raise a teenage girl. I mean, it it was just heinous in every way. When you're 15. And it's 15 years old. That is, I think, the crust of the most difficult years. Yeah. Especially between mothers and daughters. Yep. Very tough. And I will tell you that the way I got through it is writing. Okay. I wrote and wrote and wrote my grief. I just put it all on the page. And it allowed me to kind of see who I was, what I was feeling, and how in the world I was going to go on. And just been able to just get all that anger out and the rage and the sadness and the the um, not understanding what's happening. Like, what does it mean to not have a mother? Like, what does that even look like? Right. So it was just a very, it was a very powerful experience for me. And I just realized that as life went on, you know, that helped me significantly. And then later on in a gro- an adult life, I was diagnosed with chronic illness. So I wrote a book about that. Um, <laughs> that book is called Hallucination. So I just have been kind of writing to heal my whole life. I mean, it's just a very big it's part a natural of my, yeah. response for you. Yes, absolutely. But that's how we've gotten some of our best literature out there and real life accounts. You know, I, I think of my all time heroes, Maya Angelou, mm-hmm. um, being a child that grew up with no boundaries. Yeah. Just to put it that way. Um, her, well, I know why the Cage Bird Sings mm-hmm. book just spoke to me. I was probably 16, 17 at that age, mm-hmm. you know, and um, having her or Anne Frank, I mean, we think of yeah, all of these all of tragedies, them. but that how their memories and their experiences were preserved through the written word yes what has been the project you worked on that you think was most from your heart so so interesting i think i guess hallucination that was my first novel it was sort of a a, a memorial um of just everything i'd been through and i turned it into a novel even though it was very based on my experience Mm -hmm. um and i think it was from my heart because i was very ill at the time and I was really thinking I was going to die. And I went through that whole like trauma of having a terrible diagnosis. And then I, I can't remember who it was, which is so sad. But somebody said to me in all of that mix, what are you doing during the days? Like, what are you doing with your time? And I would say, well, I'm crying and dying and planning to die. You know, I was just your out of my energy head. energy was there. I was out of my head. Mm-hmm. And they said, why don't you just write something? And that's how Hallucination was born. And I just said, okay, I'm going to write something. So I write. I started writing um, the story as it was happening. So it was in real time. So I would have a doctor's appointment and then I would go back and write about it. Um, and just being able to like articulate what was happening to me was a huge relief. It really made it better and it made it so that I could look at all angles of it and see how I was participating in my own demise um i went through my guilt process you know everybody when you diagnose you blame yourself you know maybe it was too much jack daniels maybe it was too much for me it was too much clubbing in new york city you know i mean you just your head goes crazy you just cut make it up stuff um and it just it gives you peace to kind of just look at it and be like you know you can go back on your pages and see what did you just write and what does that mean well that's incredible it's powerful It is powerful. We are going to go to a break in just a few moments. So we want to say 
thank you to all of our sponsors and please give some love out to them and listen during the break and then listen when we come back right after this welcome back friends to kiki's keys we are living our best life i am here with my my best guest kim green kim green is with blank page consulting as a writing coach um, and she is here sharing about how she used writing to kind of process her traumas as a child and grief and loss and was um, sharing how writing can be really powerful. Um, so we're welcome back. Uh, tell me a little bit more about the Right to Heal retreat that's coming up for you and what that retreat entails. Well, the right to, you have the Right to Heal retreat I is... that wrong? <laughs> no, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> you Have the Right to Heal retreat is October 17th to the 21st. And it's t- happening here in Tucson, and it's an opportunity for women to come together and heal. And the healing, when I say heal, I don't want people to think it's some sad, droopy event. It really is going to be full of discovery, and fun, and catered food, and living in this beautiful mansion in foothills. And it's just going to be a very sort of exciting thing, but it's really to dig deeper and because my partner in this enterprise is a therapist so we have a balanced thing so it's me as sort of the creative part and also sort of emotional because I'm a, sort of the poster child of writing to heal and then I have a real therapist who's there to support um, and so the point of it is I want women to take some time out of their busy lives because we we live in a culture that doesn't allow us to process grief So we are breaking up and having kids and losing kids and losing parents and having diagnoses and all of these things. And we're like, do it work the next morning. So this is our culture. We don't have time to take time and just process what that means. What will that mean for me? And writing is a place that you can do that in private. So the one of the things about the retreat is that it's not, because I'm a writing coach, people worry, oh, I'm not a good writer, I can't do it. It has nothing to do with writing skills, none. No one will ask you to read something if you don't want to. No one will say your paragraph is no good, your sentence is bad, <laughs> none of that. That conversation is dead, that is not gonna happen. This is not it's a grammar Absolutely, test. it's about you getting deeper and understanding what you've been through and what you want. Because as a coach, my thing is about what's coming, what's next. So I really want women to take some time to look at what they want in their life, what has happened, put it down, put it on paper, let it go. And not, and not to at all dismiss the process of grieving. So I'm not saying we walk out and we're all done and it's all no. over, not at all. But I think you'll have more clarity about what's going on in your life. You'll have more perspective about what to do next, what's possible, and get into action. I mean, that is what the the foundation of coaching is, getting you into action. That's excellent. Yeah. I was um, referred to my Kiki's Keys. These are just kind of guides that I always share with my clients when Mm -hmm. we're talking about how do we make, you know, good decisions about protecting our family and Mm -hmm. such. And um, I say, well, Kiki's key number one is if it isn't written, it didn't happen. Mm. And that comes from a background in medical care. Mm-hmm. That's what uh, my, you know, tenure was really in was health care insurance and health care and reimbursement and that kind of thing. And so the documentation was so key that we had something written down of what occurred because if it wasn't written, it didn't happen. Yes, yes, yes. And I use that as a reminder for myself to journal, to write down, to document my goals. You know, anytime we want to get from point A to point B, we need to have some sort of roadmap to get there. And writing that down is so significant in that process. And therapeutic writing is such a wonderful way to start to address things that are bugging you, Mm -hmm. things that are unfinished in your life and in your soul, you know, old friends, old relationships, old terrible things that have happened to you physically, assaults that we all are going through these things. And so I, I also want people to know that when we come together at the You Have the Right to Heal retreat, everybody has something. So there's Mm -hmm. nobody who can say, oh, why do you know, I don't I don't know about that stuff. Everyone's hurting in some way. We are living in a world that everybody is hurting. 
And it is my vision that people will be able to start to find their voice and find their freedom and find their way out of whatever is stopping them. So that's kind of really what is at the basis of you have the right to heal. That's excellent. And is this just for women or those who identify as women, or is this um, open to all genders? How are you well, doing that? Well, it's for women. Okay. And if it even trans women are mm-hmm. welcome. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Oh, no, that's just, fine. That's fine. That's I'm just fine. curious what the parameters are. Sure, sure, sure. But it's very, and I think it's because, you know, People know that when women get together, it's a powerful event. Yes. <laughs> that Absolutely. is just all I'm going to say. And it, it's the same for men. But mm-hmm. I think when men get together, that power is a different power. And yes. when women get together, it's a different power. So I think there's we're a little bit quieter. We can be if we bring it down a notch and we go inside and we're going to dig deeper and we're going to have a lot of fun and we're going to do some activities. We're going into the desert and getting a healing from a shaman and we're going oh, in, exciting. we're going on a hike and we're going to do writing some outside and we're going to go to equine therapy, have an equine therapy experience. Oh, so wow. there's just a lot of different modalities and of course mas- massage will be available so there's a lot of things going on in this five days, but nourishing, beautiful, catered food and um, a lot of time, time oh. to be alone, time to be with others. You know, there's just a lot of, I'm trying to make a community. This is great. So the event is on October 17th through the 21st. Mm-hmm. And um, is it right in Tucson off? Uh, it's it's in Tucson in the foothills. Okay. In a home in the foothills. Very good. And um, people can register at blankpageconsult.com. And that's when you go to that website, the registration information is right there. And also there's a lot of information about the retreat itself. You'll meet the team members. You'll see what activities we're doing. You'll see the accommodation. So even though there's, it's in Tucson, there is a rate for people who live in Tucson. And there's also a rate for people who live in Tucson but maybe want to have a bit of a staycation and kind of hang out with some people and meet some new people and have a new crowd and a new experience. So it's open to anybody. If you live here but you want to stay in the house, you're welcome to do that too. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. It's always fun just to get away for the a couple of nights. Absolutely, right? yeah. Yeah. We we're always we were talking earlier about how women really do take on traditionally like the caregiver roles mm-hmm. and that we're always caring for everybody else. But it's really hard for us to take a step back and to find our own voice and mm-hmm. feel comfortable sharing that voice. Yes. If someone's having those hesitations, what's the, your first word of advice or guidance to them to help them get started? In terms of writing? Yeah, like if, they're, if they don't know where, how to tap into their voice. I think one thing is just to be honest. Truth is the key to the whole thing. And I think when people are afraid to write things, it's because they're afraid of what they're going to write. They okay. know what's going on inside and they don't want to write it. And I hear a lot that people have stopped writing in their lives because they're worried somebody will read it. So that's a very interesting thing a, a, a interesting uh, obstacle but mm-hmm. I think when people are ready to write they just have to make provisions so make a place that's locked find a place that no one will find carry it with you in your car you know make it in your bag always have it with you if that's the fear that someone is going to read it but I think being truthful is the key to start and also to know that your voice matters Every everybody has a story, and every story matters. That's right. That was shared with me with my friend um, last week, who was here, and um, Kathleen Pickerel um, was with um, our guest with the um, Terrence Pickerel Heart Fund, mm-hmm. and she had shared that with me too. That every person has a story, and Absolutely. every story matters. That's right. And I said, "Oh, I got to write that down. That's wonderful." Yeah. And that's sort of the basis of this retreat, because every woman who comes in that door has a story that matters not only to themselves, but to others. Well, that's awesome. And what if someone is not necessarily interested in the retreat or is not in town that Mm -hmm. weekend, but um, wants to connect with you more to get more information about how to get their own book and their own story started? Sure. Thank you for asking. They can 
find me on my, my website, blankpageconsult.com, and there's a, lots of contact points where you can uh, send me an email, call me. My phone number is all over the website. I'm available to talk, and I love talking to writers who are thinking about writing and then want to get started. Well, that's incredible. And just to, um, throwing this out there, we didn't talk about this beforehand, but what is it all for? What's your end goal or your goal in life with it all? I love that. That's a great question. I think my goal in life is to have a happier world. And I just think I can just do one story at a time. I want people to feel self-expressed. I want people to heal from trauma and see the past as the past and be able to stand back from it, get some objectivity to it, and go forward. And I think if we can all get our voices heard, we will have a lot less traumatic behavior, which is what the world is going through right now. Thank you so much, Kim Green. It's been a pleasure having you as our guest. That's Kim Green, K-I-M, Green, G, like the color, G-R-E-E-N. Mm -hmm. um, you can look her up to find the books that she has authored. Um, can you, do you mind sharing those titles again? Um, I have authored a novel called Hallucination. I've done a second one called Vicissitudes, which is a little controversial, but it's a, I love it. Um, and then I've written a collection of blogs called um, Isolation. And it's a blogs up from 2020, and then when 2023 trans postscripts, sort of talking about where we are now. Wow! Emotionally so through and the COVID experience. Exactly. Yes. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. Uh, we could talk to you all day. You, <laughs> you and I, I, you and I can just talk yeah. all day. You guys know when they gave me the radio show, everyone said, "Yeah, that makes sense." <laughs> <laughs> Kiki never runs out of something to talk about. But um, we are running out of time. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. So glad that you're here. Tell everyone again, blankpageconsult.com. Correct. That's where they can get more information about you and the retreat. Yes, October 17th to the 21st. Right to heal. You have the right to heal. You have the right to heal retreat. Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, that's what I was missing was the you. That's why I was <laughs> thrown off. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, definitely look into Kim Green for her books and for her guidance as well and for your next story that you're going to tell. And until next week, my friends, be the best version of yourself that you can be because nobody else can do it better than you.